Binance is the world's leading cryptocurrency exchange, but we aspire to much more. Our vision is of a world where your money is free. That means freedom of choice, exchange, and transaction. That's why, with the Binance Decentralized Exchange, fiat on-ramps around the globe, and an entire blockchain ecosystem fueled by Binance Chain, we're working to bring the freedom of money to anyone, anywhere. Binance. Exchange the world. Here's Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for tuning in to this installment of Cheaters. Please meet Christopher Armstrong, a proud young man confused by his girlfriend's recently shifty behavior. Unable to find an explanation on his own, Christopher utilizes the task force of cheaters to get a bird's eye view. Christopher Armstrong, age 28, a computer salesman worried that his girlfriend may be looking for an upgrade outside of her relationship. In the beginning of the relationship, it was pretty much like any other relationship, I guess, uh, even though we knew each other in the past, it was exciting, you know, learning each other again. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. You know, one night I called her house, her mother answered the phone, and I asked for to speak to Stephanie, and her mother said, oh, is this Eric? And I'm like, whoa, who's Eric? And I'm like, no, it's Chris. And she immediately got off the phone and she's like, hold on. You know, after a two-week lapse of not even seeing each other, we have sex, and it's like, Wow, who is this person? I mean, granted, one time in particular, Stephanie was a little drunk, so was I. And she was very wild doing and uh, being a little bit more vocal with, uh, I guess, some of the things she would say while we're having sex than ever before. And it was fun, but at the same time, it was uh, kind of worrisome. And I'm hoping, praying that she's not messing around. I mean, if she's not, I guess I have to apologize and do everything I can to prove that I'm sorry for uh, doubting her, but uh, if she is, uh, again, that would be a very bad day for me. Very, very, very well. Not even a bad day. Very bad time for me. You know, I want to, I can see myself marrying her if she's being honest and, you know, still only wanting to be with me. Stephanie Burns, age 23, an unemployed woman who may be getting busy with someone other than her boyfriend. Investigation day three. Cheaters agents carefully review the facts in the case and prepare to get on to business. Based on information provided by Christopher, Cheaters inspectors keep an eye on suspect Stephanie Burns at her parents' house, her primary residence. A mysterious vehicle slowly pulls up to the house. The car's interior light illuminates the image of an unknown gentleman. Suspect Burns hops into the car and the couple zip off down the road. The male companion then pulls into a local gas station to fill up his flashy little sedan. Cheaters' cameras zoom in on the couple and it quickly becomes clear that they are engaged in some heavy petting. <laughs> Investigators are ill at ease to discover that Christopher is being played for a fool. Suspect Burns and her handsome honcho make a turn into an apartment complex. The couple emerges from the car and investigators take note of their suspicious body language. After realizing the coast is clear, the two bolt inside the apartment. Cheaters PIs are informed that the apartment they visited actually is the residence of Stephanie's boyfriend, Christopher. Cheaters spies keep their eyes glued to the door for about an hour until the suspect and boy wonder finally emerge and make a break for his car. The two peel off and cheaters sleuths head back to the command center to formulate some new strategies. Investigation day seven. Inspectors find the two boogieing down the boulevard to an unknown destination. They pull into the same apartment complex to which they were followed days earlier. The character in this tragic comedy has now been identified as Eric B. At the recommendation of Cheater's detectives, Christopher agrees to install a tiny hidden camera in his bedroom. After a short while, Lady Burns makes her grand entrance onto the big screen, apparently delighted to join her handsome supporting cast member. After whispering sweet nothings into her ear, Prince Valiant tries to get her into the mood with a sensual, soothing back massage. At this point in time, cheater scouts realize that trouble is brewing, and suspect Burns will stop at nothing to hurt Christopher in any way possible. 
Teeter's agents get an eyeful of the behavior displayed by the suspect and decide to call it a day after the couple speeds off down the road. The very next evening, Cheater's P.I.s catch up with Stephanie and Mr. B going over to her boyfriend's apartment once again. Without delay, Companion B slings his woman onto the bed and proceeds with a masterful display of sexual prowess. In the meantime, Christopher is duped into believing that all is well in a recorded phone conversation from his beloved girlfriend. Hello? Hey, what's up, girl? No, I'm not free to... Take a little break here. I just want to give you a call see how you do. Cheaters inspectors have had enough and immediately pay a visit to an ingenuous Christopher. Coming up, the confrontation. With the unfortunate facts of the case uncovered, Cheaters contacts Christopher to inform him of Stephanie's secret affair. Remaining calm, Christopher attempts to assess the meaning of this disturbing situation. I want you to try to be as comfortable as you can. Probably all kinds of things are going through your head. The fact that I brought you out in the middle of nowhere was for one reason, was to bring you up to speed on what's going on. On this first day of investigation, our detectives <clears throat> camped out at Stephanie's. She came out of her residence and gets picked up by this car here, the gentleman inside. What? They go to a local gas station. What I question is she reaches over at this point and he kissed her. Whoa. We followed him then, which was a big surprise, to your house. They went in for about 45 minutes to an hour, then came back out of your residence. When she goes over to your house, what does she tell you she does? I mean, straighten up a little. Sometimes I have her do some laundry or something if I need a little help, but maybe cook I'm working in here for you. She'll do that, but not nah, bring no uh, nah, guy over to there. your house. No, nah, that's, that's pretty a, strange. That's a no, 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 no. On this day of investigation, we followed her once again. She has the nerve to bring him to your house again. Well, this was when we put a surveillance camera in your house. Man, I don't need. I know, my um, brother. Hold up. That's, that's in my bed. That's in your bed. And this happened two days ago. She Man, keeps bringing him over to your house? Well, well y'all still following me? What's going on? Where are they at now? Yeah, I mean, that's why I brought you here. They're together tonight. She's right across the street in this motel. You want to confront her? I don't know. Hello? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's go get him. All right. We're going to load up now. Ass. All right, buddy. Come on. Let's load you up. I want to see your warrant. What are you doing? Who is this? Get out of here. Are you I supposed to Tommy love me? The TV yeah, show you show you supposed to be loving me? Me? Hello, cheaters. You're lying. Who are these people? Get out. How this long you been with him? Go away. Go away. What? what? Years they've been together. I want to see some balance. First, first time I didn't seen the tape. Get the out. The tape of you and him and my bed twice. This cannot be. Two happening. separate times. Who is this? Who? Hold up. What's What's your, who are you, number one? Did she tell you about Does me? Does it matter who I am? Yeah. Who are you? Who are you? Yo, hold up. No, bro. who are you? Hold up. No, I, I ain't nah, gonna do nothing nah. to this. What nah, do you mean? Who, who am I? Who are you? Who are you, man? Who are you? Hey, 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 come on, guys. Come on. Come here. Hold up. Well, who are you? Oh, hold up, man. No. This is my girlfriend. Then what's the truth? You know what? Stephanie, you want to explain you know what? what's going on? After two years, this is how you. You know what? How you this. thank him? She tell you she's been with me for two years? No, she didn't. I've got surveillance. You don't know nothing house. about me. I don't know anything about Who are you? My name is Chris. I'm a boyfriend. We've been together for no, two I'm years. No, I'm her boyfriend. You she was talking about getting settled down, getting married. You know, Would you? What you with me. What you with me talking about, talking about talking oh, about settling boy. down, commitment. Stephanie, do you love Chris? 
yesterday. How you gonna do that in my bed? I mean, what's up with the hangout? You don't got a house, man? Your bed. Mom? Your hey. bed. No, not here. That's Two times I've seen y'all ass. A room. So why are you here? Why are you still I'm here? I'm here because I'm trying why, to see why, what the why, why, doing. Still, why, why are you talking? Play, I'm going to tell you, bro. I'm giving you no. a big break right now because you don't know what's going on. But don't push it. I seen y'all twice on tape we in my bedroom. My bedroom twice at my house. Why were you bringing him over to his house? What's up with that? I my parents' house. So you go and have a fling with this yeah. guy at your boyfriend's house, the guy that you said you love? You say, oh, no, I love you? Mm -mm. What does love mean to you? Does she, she tell you she loves you? She tells me all the time. <laughs> Ooh, like I said, me. talking about marriage, bro. I don't know where you came in the picture. Dog, nah, I've been here a long time, man. I know this girl since high well, school. Well, obviously, you must not hey. right, because she likes just the way I... Well, hey, you know what? On hey, the real... Don't be stupid, pal. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell him, man. You know, you can... Obviously, he didn't do something right. Going to go see you know her sleep around with other guys you know looking what? for Maybe something not, else. But if you want to keep somebody like that that's going to lie to two people, outright lie to me and outright deceive you, you dumber than she is. Coming up, the conclusion. I'll write lie to me and I'll write deceive you. You dumber than she is. You know, Stephanie, you got a shot to tell him something right now. You got a shot to be a, some kind of decent How human many being. times have I asked you? You know, is it somebody else? Every time I... Sorry, I mean... Uh, <laughs> After all this time, that's it. I'm sorry. Um, I feel bad that I hurt him. Hey, you need to watch what you do, man. I mean, you... You just destroyed people's lives. And it would been a lot easier. It would have hurt me still, but... The words have been a lot easier than the picture and the words. I don't have nothing else to say, bro. Man. Just whatever, man. Just... That's ridiculous, man. That's it. So where do we go from here? Well, he could have been a guy that you were with for a month before you cheated on him with another guy. Or cheated on the guy with him, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even sure if I want to be with you. I'm trying to stop smoking. Oh, he just took the lighter. I can't do it. No, we'll take care of me. I'll get you a lighter. This place makes me want to cry. Stuff. Yeah. Aren't you hurting at all? I don't know. My parents. Mm. What about your parents? I don't know. It's just stuff they say. I mean, it's just. What did they say? They don't like him? Why? Um, They won't tell me reasons why. You don't know if people want to try and talk to you know, him. You know, work things out or what? But. You mean you would consider talking and dealing with it? I mean, I, if you want to talk to me about it. I was just numb. I mean, it's, after the tape, I was through. I mean, but, you know, I always believe you can't get mad at the guy unless he knows you. I think he's a better man than you deserve, but... Right now, yeah. You lost your ride, huh? Let's go now. So what? You say you want you got something else to say to me? Sorry. Yeah, I still love you, but what do I do? Coming up next, Cheaters revisits a previous case from its archives. It's really better that you just be honest with your mate and you just tell them the truth and you don't go do anything behind their backs. Otherwise, it could be bad. After the confrontation, Christopher temporarily goes into hiding to settle his worried mind. At the end of the show, Cheaters fills you in on his current state. But next, Cheaters brings back Elizabeth Hamilton, whose infidelity against her husband was previously witnessed on the show. Elizabeth offers Cheaters her perspective on what occurred that emotional day. Elizabeth Hamilton, age 20. Cheaters pays a personal visit to Elizabeth so that she may present her side of the events regarding her earlier confrontation with her husband, Jacob. Seeing him there and to tell, knowing that he's going to find out that I was lying to him. 
and that I was with this other guy whenever I was supposed to be with him kind of made me worry about whether how he would react to it, you know. Open this door. What are you doing, baby? What's going on, honey? What's going on, baby? Who is this? Huh? What are you? A friend of yours? Who is this? I've seen pictures of you. You what? What are you doing with my wife? You know what I'm saying? That's your wife. I didn't really kiss him. I mean, if I did, it was like a friendly kiss. I didn't mean anything by it. I didn't feel anything for him. I was just going out with him to have a good time. You kissed him on film. I have video footage of you kissing. I see video footage, you know what I'm saying? You kissed him. It's friendly. Okay. A friendly kiss. Maybe. I mean, have you kissed me friendly before? Maybe. I'm sorry. Jacob really wanted to get to Nathan. I saw it in the video, he was trying to get to him. He really hated Nathan, even though it was me that also had something to do with it. He was, I think he had more hate towards Nathan, but it was hard. I think he really wanted to probably get into a fight with Nathan. I'm really glad that the camera crew was there because he probably would have. I'm getting out here It did really surprise me the way he was he was shouting and yelling at my husband and me and telling me to go back with him and saying that he didn't go to high school with me and that he just met me like a week ago or something. That was really surprising. Saying that I came on to him, that was so wrong. <laughs> Get in the car, Baby. man. Let's go. No, this is my husband. What has she been telling you? She didn't tell me anything. She just come on to me, you know? Whatever. You want to leave with that? No, shit. I'm gone. Whatever, you know? No, I, 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 I just met her like a week ago, you know? Like I don't think other, sh other people should have to go through this. I mean, it's really better that you just be honest with your mate and you just tell them the truth and you don't go do anything behind their backs because otherwise it could be bad and you don't know how it's going to end or not. So I would, my word to everybody is to not do this and to stay away from it and be true to your husband. After finding the man of her dreams, Brandy Landry quite naturally assumes her relationship should move to the next level. However, within the last few weeks, Brandy notices several issues with her boyfriend's attitude. With too many of her phone calls going straight to voicemail, Brandy feels neglected and lonely. Concerned that something untoward occurs behind her back, Brandy asks for aid to vanquish her fears. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. I met Tommy a little over three and a half years ago. We met through social media and uh, instantly hit it off over the phone. And like I said, I moved back to the Metroplex and everything's been really good until recently, so. Tommy, age 48, a marketing manager of a fitness club, suspected of getting in a few extra workouts with another woman. After a short briefing, Cheaters deploys intel units to the suspect's workplace. Upon Knight's descent, Cheater's private eyes spot the suspect as he leaves work. Tommy drives to an uptown shopping center. The suspect parks and walks to a nearby coffee shop. Inside, Tommy grabs a cup of coffee. Outside, the suspect meets up with an unknown woman. Tommy greets the female with a hug and a kiss. Um, my suspicions here lately have been the fact that he's been working late several nights a week. His checks haven't been any bigger. Um, Tommy's marketing manager at a gym and he's working for commission and you would think if you're working late, you'd be bringing home more money. Um, Tommy's been working more hours than I put in promoting bands, so I don't, I'm just, I'm not stupid. I, I know there's gotta be something going on. When I call him because he's late, He's really rushed, and it's, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, love you, bye. And he, he hangs up. It's, it's never more than a minute, if that. 
nothing like it was, you know, even three and a half months ago, where, you know, he'd stay on the phone for 15, 20 minutes at a time. Um, I also did find, I was going through his phone, looking for something he asked me to look for, and I found a picture of him and this bimbo chick with her boobs hanging out, and it was just, it's like, really? That's not even what you're into. You're more of an ass man wise, or tit, what, you know, what is this? And he just explained it as a, a client that, that really just is outgoing like that, which I don't find appropriate at all. Taking a pause from their window shopping, the pair stops momentarily. Tommy gropes his partner. After a few minutes, the suspect and his mysterious lady continue their jaunt. The short walk ends at the woman's car. Tommy gets one last grab of her luscious derriere. The lady gets into her car. As Tommy walks back to his car, the woman drives away. I've invested three and a half years of my time, my emotions, my love. I, I've been through this before. And I swore I wouldn't do it again. I figured with someone older, I wouldn't have to worry about these problems. But, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully we don't find anything at all. But if we do, I just, I, I really, I mean, I'll lose it. I don't know. I don't know where I'll go or what I'll be doing. I, I just don't know. Cheater's investigators stay on the stakeout. The cheater's team watches as Tommy leaves work for the night. The suspect drives across town to an upscale restaurant. After a short wait, the woman from previous surveillance arrives to passionately greet Tommy. The woman, now identified only as Jenny, holds hands with the suspect as the pair enters the restaurant. Once inside, quite a bit of playful fondling occurs. Sometime later, after finishing the meal, the suspect escorts his date back to her car. Tommy kisses Jenny as she wraps her legs around his torso. Jenny gets into her car. The suspect walks to his own vehicle. Tommy drives home to his neglected girlfriend, Brandy. Spotting the suspect's routine, Cheater's detectives stay with the stakeout of Tommy's workplace. At the end of the day, the suspect leaves work. Cheater's investigators covertly follow Tommy to a motel. The suspect goes to one of the rooms. Jenny opens the door. Tommy greets his femme fatale. The suspect enters the door. Cheater's agents wait. Sometime later, the door reopens. Jenny wears a towel, and Tommy's shirt hangs out. The suspect gives his paramour a goodbye kiss as his hands wander all over her body. Tommy leaves the room, pausing in his car to tuck in his shirt. As the suspect cleans up his evidence before going home to Brandy, Cheaters prepares their evidence for a meeting with Brandy. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that Cheaters agents have collected all evidence of the suspect's deceit, Cheaters contacts Brandy. Grappling with the prospect of life alone, Brandy now decides to examine all findings. Brandy, the first thing I'd like to say is um, we're glad to have you here this evening. I understand there's been a lot of things going on in your relationship right now with Tommy. Are you ready to see what we've come up with? Sure. All right. All right, Brandy. We begin our investigation outside of his workplace. Mm -hmm. We see him emerge he walks out, he gets into his vehicle, and he leaves. As our detectives follow Tommy, he arrives at a shopping center. We see him pull into the parking lot, park his car. He gets out, and he walks. That's when we see him walk over to a coffee shop. He is by himself. Walks in, grabs a cup of coffee, and then when he comes out, standing there, all of a sudden he's approached by this woman in the boots. Ew. Smoking a cigarette. Oh, my God. They kiss right. I know it's I know it's hard to watch this stuff, but uh, they kiss in front of the coffee shop, walk over in front of a mattress store where he proceeds to squeeze all over her, pull her shirt up. I mean he's he's being very touchy feely with this girl. 
in that, a sense. That's the bitch that was in the picture. This is the girl that was in the picture yeah. you saw? Yeah. Are you 100% on that? Oh, I'm 100%. So this is that same girl then? Oh, yeah, definitely. A gym client? Yeah, supposedly. Supposedly. Okay, well, after they're hugging and kissing in front of the mattress store, he then proceeds to walk her to her vehicle where he then extends his arms below her waistline and just grabs all over her. They kiss multiple times. She gets into her vehicle and leaves, and he does as well. Moving forward with our investigation, Brandy, on this day, we're outside of Tommy's workplace. And a few moments later, he waltzes out, gets into his car, and he leaves. As our detectives follow him, he drives and arrives at this motel. A door opens close to where he parked, and that same woman from the previous day is there. During the time that he walks into that motel room, Brandy, he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that conversation. hours late. It was more like five hours late, but... After finishing up your phone call, short time later, door opens with her in a towel only. <sighs> what a completely whore. nude. His pants, you can see his belt hanging out. He has to walk over to his car before he can even get inside. He's tucking in his shirt, mm -hmm. fixing his pants, getting the trousers all buttoned up. I, know, I he... know what night that was. That's... You know what night that was? Oh, God, yes. We'll that come was back the first over here night. for a second. Oh my God. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves the motel. Okay. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go stage. Okay. Wait for Detective Gomez to give us a call, mm. get a location. Brandy, are you ready to go confront these two? <laughs> you know I am. I'm just, it's time for this to be done and over. All right, well, let's go get you the truth right All this right, way. Thank you. There's our detective right there. Give me one second. Gomez. Hey, can you hear me? All right, so he left his job. They went to Havana's restaurant and club. All right, copy that. We'll see you soon. All right, bye. They're together right now at a place called Havana's. It's a nightclub slash bar and lounge from what I got, but they are together. We're going to go ahead, go to that location right now. So let's go ahead and hit the road. Once we get there, we're going to pull around the back. Okay. Gomez is going to come out, and he's going to direct us to where they're at. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Well, we're actually at our location. Where's our detective? You see him? Let's see. Oh, there's our detective right there. All right, are you ready? Yeah. All right. How's it going? How's it going, Gomez? Brandy, how are you? Fine. OK, you ready to do this? They're inside. There's people inside. Be careful. Watch your footing. He's wearing a red shirt and black pants. All right? All right, everybody out. Coming up, the conclusion. They went to Havana's restaurant and club. I'll have you lead. I'll put her first so she can get right to them. Hey! 
Sweetheart! Man, really? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? A hooker like that? A what? No! I'm, telling, I'm trying to tell you. Who the f is she? I saw a picture of her. Her name is Jimmy. Wife. Oh, really? Yeah, really. And she f me real good. What is your name? My name's Jenny. Jenny, hi, I'm Clark Gable with the hey, show Cheaters. Clark Gable, how are you? I'm good. The only reason why I'm here is uh, because this gentleman over here, Tommy, <laughs> is with uh, that woman, Brandy, for three and a half years. Really? Were you aware of that? No, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> you ain't aware of What's the matter? You out of bread? Maybe you ought to quit smoking or something. You're the smoking piece of And look at your little whore over there. What about her? Fat ass! How'd you like to look her fat ass up, by the way? How did you pick her fat ass up to put her on the car? I'm telling you, this was a sales... You're this is a so full of You're such a liar. You come up here acting You're like any these people with you? Well, you, you know what? I'm not going to go to Stormy. I'm not going to go to any of my friends because I don't like this kind of drama, and you know this. I just have one question. Did he approach you? He sure did. He sure did. What did he say? He wanted, He, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to say anything. It is what it is. Hang tight for me for a minute. I'll be sure, back. Sure, no problem, Clark. All right, thank you. Go, go, go. Take her back to that little motel room. You know, since you that's what you're into, obviously. You don't motel go anywhere what? classy with her? That's where the trailer park stays, isn't it? I guess you can take the girl out of the trailer park, but not the trailer park out of the girl. Huh. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> nothing like you think. Jenny? Oh, honey, I can tell yeah, you right now, her she's her a Jenny. trailer. Her name is Jenny. She's okay. trailer trash. I mean, you've been, you've been, you've been with Brandy for three and a half years, and from and what, what she's hell? told me, three and a half years, you're and you're throwing it away. A pretty solid guy. So I'm just trying to get your side of the story. Uh, you know you know, I'm not here to upset you or anything. I'm just here to understand what mistake you made and what happened. Oh, this is a business deal. You know, I'm trying to bank money for my boss. Trying to business deal? Yeah. Is that all you're gonna tell me? Well, unless you got something to prove otherwise. Yeah, I have a lot to prove otherwise. I mean, are you sure you didn't go anywhere? You didn't go to a motel room, didn't have dinner together, and you know, take a phone call while you yeah. were inside the motel? Of course I'd, I'd take a client out to eat. I'd take a client to dinner. You know, what's up? That's what's, that's what's up. It's one thing taking a client to dinner. It's another thing taking a client to grab some coffee, but it's one thing to take a client to a motel room fully undressed her good, to the point you? where you come out with your pants still unbuttoned. <laughs> you guys have been all over me, haven't you? You know, you're very comfortable. What, the what are you doing with my man? No, bitch. Bitch, no, I've been with him for three years. Hey, man. Hey, man. Take it, no, why don't you get it, man? Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 Hey, go, go, back off, back off, back off. deserve each other. Take your trailer trash. Get out of my face. Look at your whore, whore. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bitch. Come on, let's get it. I don't want anything to do with this trash anymore. Tommy, you have nothing He's to say stuck at all? that. I've said plenty. You need to shut up. Me? Yeah, you. What? Are you going to threaten him? Why? Because you got did something to uh, him? <laughs> Excuse me? You serious, man? Man, if that wasn't on camera right now, I'd be beating you. I was holding you with one hand and beating your ass with the other. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Why, well, why are you worried about the cameras? I came here to talk to you, not to upset you or anything, to ask you a couple simple questions. Where's my glasses? Someone why? pick up his glasses. They're not working anyway. Obviously. You can't that, that freaking Glasses. Someone's getting in trouble for that. Your glasses are right there in your pocket. These ones? These? Talking about these, honey? The ones that don't work? Hey, look, I got them. Bitch ass. Go screw your whore. I'm out. Give me the keys oh, to my car. Ass, bitch. Here. Come on, bitch. Here. Come on, I'll you have somebody my glasses. All right, your glasses up. I'll drive. Let him go. Let him go. Okay? It's all right. Don't be okay. Don't be all right. As soon as I take her home. Oh, oh, baby. You're not coming home. Yeah, you baby, take that bitch and don't come home. home. You, baby. Tommy, do you have anything? Do you have anything to say to anyone that would see this right now? Oh, oh, my. Drive off, you little whore. You ready to come on? Come on. Come on. Keep driving. Yeah, you're gonna keep driving because you're a puss. You're a puss like that. You're not even a woman. 
You're not even a woman. And you're not a man. You're not a man. Go to hell. Thank you. 